righty, all righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good evening. This is John Henry Soto here, along with Mr. Jorge Batista. Um, some people don't know he's my cousin, actually. <laughs> grew up with this knucklehead. But we're yeah. here. We are. Uh, we're really excited to be here this evening. And uh, there's our face. Hey. And I forgot my hat, George. Oh my God. All right. As long as they listen. As what long as they know on? that I got the looks in the family, that's all they need to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, these filters are amazing. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Tim Sabatino is here today. George, you want to read a little bit about our guest? I'm very excited to have him here. Yeah, absolutely. We are very excited to have Mr. Tim Sabatino here. Uh, just a little bit of his background. For over 25 years, Mr. Sabatino has worn many hats in the entertainment industry as a celebrity photographer, an actor, director, and producer for music videos. His credits also include commercials and commercial advertising photo shoots. Tim is also a true artist with uh, gallery exhibitions worldwide of his oil paintings and photography, having won his first art contest at the young age of five. Tim is a big supporter and regularly contributes to human rights charities, and we are very excited and honored to have him on this program. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Tim Sabatino. Yes. These, these applause are a little long, so we, we're just going to play along and have some fun here. We have a big um, audience. <laughs> thank you so much for being on. Thanks for Appreciate having me. It. All right, audience. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being on, Tim. This is so awesome to have you on here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Cool, cool. So we want to we want to really get started um, on the purpose why we're here, uh, why we do this show, George and I, and it's it's you know it's usually to really give the audience and anybody out there um, a journey, you know, anything um, overcoming barriers, mm. um, you know, handling uh, objections if you're in sales or we're all in sales basically, right? And, um, and basically that's what the show is about. So, and, you know, also spotlighting conversations, you know, so we want to put the spotlight on you. We want to kind of go back a little bit into your background and, and, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got started and, on all wearing all these hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's actually very interesting. Um, how my career has evolved. Uh, a friend of mine right back there. <laughs> um, so I, I grew up with an artist family. So uh, my mom is a, is an artist. She draws and paints. My grandmother is a painter, oil paints. Um, and we grew up drawing and painting in the home all the time. Hmm. Um, and we, I, I mean, I'd say we grew up like a pretty poor family, but we always had art supplies in the, in the house. We could always draw. We always had paper and crayons and whatever, colored pencils, pastels. We we're always at the table drawing together as a family. Oh, that's so cool! Um, mm -hmm. And that and that was always very natural for me as well. And and I loved it so much that I took every art class in high school and college. I did get my college degree in fine art. Oh. Um, and um, uh, and so then as I'm going through, sorry, I got a bunch of interruptions. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, have, I have two kids and a cat, so I, 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 know, <laughs> I know that. Um, so, so then, then, uh, straight out of high school, I joined the Navy. I was gone in the Navy for four years, and I joined the Navy so I could travel the world and so I could have money for the GI Bill for college. Hmm. Came back went to college, um, but that wasn't enough to pay for college, so I got a job at the local camera store because I was just fascinated with cameras, and fell in love with photography and that became my career i sold cameras for seven years oh wow. and just became i became a, a pro medium format and large format camera specialist which also included studio lighting so um after selling every studio lighting company everything that's manufactured pretty much on the planet because i worked at the biggest camera store in la sammy's camera hmm. um and uh so that, that led to photography. I fell in love with photography. And next thing you know, I was like, I love this, you know, and um, I became an independent photographer. Started in 1994, full time. Um, 
and I've been shooting since then. So being in LA, you know, it's all here. There's movies and television and commercials and music videos. Um, and, I, and I really love, I love LA. I love the fact that it is such an artist um, center for mm -hmm. creative, creative people. Um, so how did, so it, 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 I got into acting for a little bit. I was acting for about 15 years and, and commercially, I was always, yeah. I, was, I did really well in commercials. So I was booking commercials and then, uh, and then I started working as a DP and, uh, um, that evolved into directing. And then, so now when you're, when you're in LA, it's easy to work all the, all the parts, all the, all right, the right. you know, uh, I've done producing where I would do, and I've done casting. So sometimes I've got to cast, you know, the actors or the models or the uh, dancers or, or, or and the choreographers or, or whatever, whatever's needed for the job. Yeah. Um, so that, uh, that acting actually got me into stunt driving. And because my, my, my agent would send me out on car commercial auditions all the time. Mm. So there's always a car commercial. So the end of time, you know, for example, Toyota Camry, there's a new make and model every single year. So they make a new, right. new every year. All new commercials. Yeah. 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 Um, so the casting directors would all, always ask me what, what stunt driving, because they would often want a, an actor who could also drive. Mm. Um, so I went and I studied and I took all the, all the stunt driving courses here in LA. There's a couple, there's a, a couple really good ones. And through the stunt driving, I got on a driving team. And next thing you know, I'm stunt driving in the movies and television. And, oh and, 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 and it is so much fun. Yeah. And stunt driving, you can't, there's not enough work for that to be your full time gig. So it's always a side, it's a side thing. You know, well, I worked on Fast and the Furious oh, back wow. then. Wow. Um, about, driven in about 45, maybe 50 uh, movies and, uh, and television. But you don't, you know, you don't work a lot. Like Fast and Furious, yeah. we worked for three three weeks. And then yeah, yeah. Movie's done. Um, I've driven in about 150 car commercials uh, over this is over like 20 about 20 years. Um, and a car com a commercial you shoot in one day. Right. Okay. So you know you're you're right. rare, but some commercials are are two two three day shoots. Um, so that has evolved. Now, mind you, all these years I'm shooting photography as my bread and butter. Oh, okay. My day yeah. job, my day yeah. job is photography. Yeah. So I'm shooting right. everything: fashion, advertising, product, uh, headshots, um, act, uh, celebrities. You know, whatever. It, it's really all here. Yeah, it is really all here. Um, I wanted to ask you um, <laughs> when you're in. So, you know, having the, the mindset of being open to things, you know, I think that that's something that I've run into a lot. I've always been that way. You know, I'm like, oh, I like doing that. Or, you know, I've kind of fallen. And sometimes you always hear somebody say, well, you got to pick one thing. You know what I mean? You, you can't just go around doing everything. Pick one thing, you know. And and I always hated that, that comment. I always thought, well, I'm a creative human being. I'm a creative spiritual being. I'm going to create wherever I feel that I want to create. Yes. Was that ever anything that that a challenge for you, or was it just like smooth for you and everyone else kind of gave you a hard time? Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. I definitely have heard that many, many times over and over again. In fact, I heard that when I was working at the camera store, and I was preparing to leave and go to be self-employed as a photographer, um, I heard from many, many people that you need to focus on one subject. You need to be like, for example, a wedding photographer. Now that is a genre that your wedding photographers are so much work and you're so busy that that's pretty much all you can do. Right. Well, I don't do weddings. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I have shot them. I do shoot them rarely. It's usually a friend or word of mouth. Um, it's, you know, I have the, the weekend available and I can, it, it's very rare, but I do do a handful of weddings a year yeah. but you can get sucked into that world and then that's then you don't have time for anything else and i, right. so I want that um uh so i i did take that as a challenge because i love to shoot everything I'm, if you're a photographer if you know lighting right if you, know light mm -hmm. lighting, you can shoot it right. so if it's a person if it's a product if it's a car 
if the, if it's interiors of a house, if you can light it, you can shoot it. If you know your photography properly and you know you know the proper tools, you can do it. So I do think that photographers who do specialize in one category probably book more work in that one category, and that's probably with what they want to want to do, and, that, and that's fine. Right. Right. So, but you know, it, it's I do love to do so much. You know, right. <laughs> you know, producing music videos is a lot of fun. I love working with the musicians and creating and making this visual story to a song. Right. That is really fun. You know, I love doing that too. And and lighting is really, you know, it's such a huge thing. And and now with film and if yep. you can, like you said, if you can light it, you can shoot it. And I think it's it has so much to do with people don't really realize how much it has to do with storytelling yeah oh, i mean it, it is so important you know and you're watching it and you shouldn't really know oh the, the lighting you know as a as a consumer right yeah. but when you're lighting it it's very very um very purpose george you have a question i'm sorry yeah i was just curious because you you actually go on and on <laughs> i know this guy just keeps talking i'm telling you um so you you were lucky that you actually grew up in a house school that really uh household that that uh they they saw how how art was so important to them right you're through yes. all yeah that that's great now so what would you say to someone who who has that artistic vision and that creativity within them but they're not in a household that's supportive of it right because then you always run into like well yeah you're not going to do that you know for the rest of your life or you got to go get a day job that type have of a thing. plan so, b so, right, exactly so what, what would you say to, to somebody in that uh aspect? that is a great question so and I, I do run into that a lot. I work a lot of, with a lot of actors who move to LA to pursue their dream of acting, but never had support from their family. Hmm. Um, in fact, they had the you know the, the counter support, the, the negative right. uh, comments and stuff like that. Um, so I would tell I would what I in fact what I usually tell people who I meet like that is. Um, I think that people who who do have that sport are very lucky, and and the people who don't have it, they need to not be a fact of those people, even if it's their mom and dad, if it's their parents, if it's their, you know, their best friend, their spouse. So you, you have to confront them, and you have to be like, you have to really, really, really let them know, hey, this is what I want to do. And, and I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do better with your support. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. please yeah. give me the support. So yeah. I think that getting in that communication with the, that person, um, and if it's somebody, if it's not a family member and it, or not a spouse or somebody like maybe somebody you work with or just a friend, just that's like, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> care how long you've been friends. Adios. Right. Listen, right. I, I I had a best friend for 15 <laughs> years, 15 wow. years. I thought this guy was my best friend. And, and I, you know, with doing, after doing some personal growth and life improvement and stuff, I realized, Oh, this guy keeps invalidating me. He hmm. keeps making me wrong and keeps making me, he doesn't make me feel good. Right. So that, that person is in your life and they don't make you feel good. And, and if you can't, if you can't get through to them and confront them and get them to like, you know, change that, that part, then you just end it. I don't care. And I, let me tell you something. Magic happens when you do that. Oh, right. I, when I realized this guy was, was, was bad for me, I completely disconnected from, I said, you're not my friend. And, 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 you know, the way you are, the way you treat me, you're actually really not my friend. So don't ever call me again. Cut it off with him. I'm not kidding. The next day, I pulled in some new amazing friends, some new friendships. Like things started happening, and my business got busier. Mm -hmm. I, I just like in a 24 hour period, things started getting better for me, right. all because I disconnected from this bad one bad seed that was in my life. Yeah, yeah, it's a powerful thing. I actually have a story like that from 2013 that I did that. And the next two weeks afterwards were incredible. Things were just coming in. I was a magnet for like positive, positive uh, projects and things. 
it is an amazing thing, you know, and, and I think what you said earlier about the, the communication is, you know, there's this uh, fear of being invalidated that an artist always has, because this is what we, we, we put ourselves out there. Right. Hey, everybody, look what I'm doing, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a bit of a, you know, uh, scary place to be sometimes. Yeah. But to have that serious conversation with that family member or, or friend or spouse or whatever i think it, they don't take it seriously enough when they want to get into that conversation like say listen tonight at six o'clock i want to sit down with you and i want to have a serious conversation about something is that okay with you you know because then they're like i love that, that. that's weird you know <laughs> but you know and it's like but now they're gonna they know that you really want to say something and then you bring it up and you say it and then if they don't get it at that point then you know obviously you got to increase yeah, yeah just the, the gradient just, of it but yeah yeah just on a point on that because uh, i kind of went through it a little bit when as a as a musician and you know my my mother knew nothing about music and she was like, ah, you know, this guy's this kid's gonna play the drums and whatever he thinks he's gonna play. And we had that, I remember having that conversation with her. And John, we, you and I have had this conversation many times. And after that conversation, there was a part of me, number one, it freed me when I did have that conversation that I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be a musician. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna play and I'm gonna express myself. But there was also a little bit of um of that thing that's that it was almost like it, it actually made me better because what did they say success is the best revenge sometimes right when you right. when that's you get right. really good you can turn around and say you see <laughs> you know right. what i'm saying right. so i kind of had that mindset as well yeah. yeah that's another thing when when you have somebody who's invalidating you or if somebody even if they're not bad like that let's just maybe they don't believe in you or they just don't support whatever it is you're doing flourish and prosper just right. keep going keep going don't exactly. stop right. you you know, don't give up, be persistent yeah. and and be an example. So when they see you and they see how well you're doing, yeah. someday they'll snap out and go, ah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Good at that, you know, all right. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I also tell young artists is to be very, very um observant of who's pray, you know, who's supporting you and who doesn't say anything at all. Right. When you have like a success or you pull them like who does who that you know that they're close to you, but they don't say one thing, not even a little like, uh, not even a thumbs up. And yeah. you're like, huh, interesting. You know, keep be very, very observant. I mean, we're we're you know, we're uh we're uh precious creatures here, the artists, that's, you know. That's so. a red flag when somebody doesn't <laughs> right. hear anything. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, George, I, I, you said, yeah. Yeah. So just, um, looking at your work and I, I, I looked at a couple of your music videos, which were amazing by the yeah. way. Thank you. So I just kind of want to get a little sense of your process there. Um, how much of you are, how much is it you versus what the artist wants or does it depend on who you're working with? Yes. It's different with every artist. Okay. Um, I recently did three music videos for the singer in New York, singer songwriter. Um, she did so much preparation. Um, I mean, she she wrote her songs. She wrote the sh the shot list. She wrote she she um, even wrote down the wardrobe, the style. The, she gave samples. She did research, and she gave me a wow. mood board. A, yeah, and wow. and. I knew exactly what she wants, and that's that's what I need. If I can, if I'm gonna make a music video for an artist, I need to know. I need as much data as I can get, right, in order to make that visual story represent what that artist and that song is supposed to communicate. Yeah. So um, this one artist, she was. I mean, she knew everything she wanted, everything. I mean, and shot list. Wow. Work that he even <laughs> bought the props and the. You know, she did a lot of stuff. Um, then I've had other artists who had no idea what they wanted. They had a, a great song. Um, and they were, you know, a, 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 like a, a photogenic person. Hmm. Um, and they might have had great style, but they just didn't. They had no idea what they wanted f uh, for the music video. Right. So I have meetings with them. I go over ideas. I do research, and I, I put together. I usually put together a little mood board or a little um, storyboard, and present them a couple ideas. And we might change, make changes and adjustments, and this and that. 
Um, but yeah, I love the whole creation process. So yeah. and my favorite music video is when we can collaborate and together right. we build and we work it out and we do it. Um, sure. You know, if they know everything they want and I just, I'm just basically making exactly what they want and they already know what they want. That's fine too. It, it's all fun, but I do really enjoy the creation process. Yeah, it does get actually interesting when you're, I've directed a few music videos and um, when I've had the same situation, there was like nothing on the table, you know, or even something that really made, like I want a helicopter to to drop me off and on the rooftop. And then I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, all right, what's your budget for this? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, that kind of thing. And then there's, there's others that come with like with full ideas, but I, I like, I like the fact when I hear the song, I, you know, I think in images, like my, my mind just always is that way. Mm -hmm. when I was a kid. So even when we play music, I'm thinking I played with George in a band for many years and stuff and we recorded albums and all that. That's cool. And um, yeah. so I always thought in, the image first, you know, or the song gave me the image of what it is. So do you, when you hear a song, does it something boom snap, like automatically you're like, this should, this is the feel and this is what it should be. I'm going to present this. Yes. Yeah. Often. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and sometimes I have to listen to it several times, but um, yeah. 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 You know, I, I'll hear something. Oh, oh, I also, I always ask the artist to send me the, 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 um, the song, like the lyrics. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. when I hear it and then I can also read it and I can see, and then, um, and I, I, I always have the artist tell me in their own words, what is this song supposed to communicate? What, what do they want it to communicate to their audience? Right. And then I think with that, and then I listen to it. And then I start taking out notes and start creating and start you know putting yeah. together ideas and then present it to them and then they we we go back and forth and 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 come up with a little visual story and then we go yeah share. yeah I made the mistake of asking a hip hop uh, artist once what he wanted the audience to get from it and uh, it was not really <laughs> <laughs> I shot it but I had to be like all right we're, let's let's try this idea and it went well it went it went well but it was a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I want to ask, I want to talk a little bit about, um, barriers that come up and we, we kind of like touched upon it. Um, was there ever a time where you ran into a barrier that you kind of said, I'm, I'm done. Um, <laughs> definitely, I definitely have ran into barriers, but I definitely have not come close to giving up. Good. Um, and that could just be my personality, stubborn. You know, uh, I I would say, I mean, from, I remember as young as like maybe the eighth or ninth grade, having problems with the other kids in school because I was the, the weird guy. I was the, the you know, the weird artist. Right. Um, I definitely have always been very, creative and artistic and and I would, I would dress artistic and I would you know um, I, I was definitely a little bit different not your average you know um, so starting then going all the way up until my my 30s is when I, I really got I got some attacks hmm. I think it was when I was doing really well. Wow. They, yeah, I, of course. Is, yeah, right. So when there's times that I would really like do some like really explode. I'm doing, I had art. I had a, this amazing art show in uh, in Malibu. Um, my my paintings, my all my, uh, I had a whole collection of paintings that were in this restaurant, this famous restaurant, Casa Escobar, in Malibu, that. I kept selling and I kept getting commissions from these celebrities and these people uh, in Malibu and the the restaurant owner extended my exhibition from three months and kept ex extending it. And it ended up being there for two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. I've been heard of for a, <laughs> for, I, for like a rest. Like, yeah. yeah. So for all the artists out there, I recommend uh, hit up restaurants because you have a regular, uh, new clients, so people coming in and out. And you, there's always people in there seeing your work, and and they get free art in their restaurant, and then 
put a little you know sign so they know that it's for sale. Um, at that time period, which was around uh, 19, uh, 2005, right around, around 2004, 2005, um, I, there were some people, and a lot of these were people who I thought were my friends. Hmm. And, and, you know, things, you know, like rumors start getting started. And then there's, you know, you, people start, I, I don't know. I definitely got, I definitely, definitely got attacked. Right. You know, by, by people who just didn't want me to win. Um, and this was, this has gone off and on throughout my life. And I, as I've gotten more experience and, uh, uh, learn how to handle it um it's it's less i mean well it's less of it, it has a less effect on me right it still happens but now now i'm very aware of it and aware of these kind of people and when it, you know when when something is happening you know i know how to how to get rid of it very yeah. and it's part of the awareness also that i was talking about earlier be aware when you're really doing well and who attacks you because that means that you're doing well yes that's right Keep and going. And really pay attention to who your friends are. Oh, like, like pay attention to, you know, the way they treat you, if they support you or not, the things they say, because, you know, they yeah. you can say things that, right. <laughs> that are, they have an undercut. Right. That's what I was going to say that it's, it's sometimes it comes in this weird uh, flow. Like they're, they're trying to help you, you know, and it's like, listen, I don't want you to get hurt. But a lot of people don't make it. So I don't want you to hurt. You know, I want you to be safe, you know. So why don't you yeah. kind of chill out on that a little bit? Yes. Come work with me down at the you know AMP. And we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna right there. You got safe, you got benefits and everything. And yeah. then you can do your stuff on the weekends. Yep. Yeah. And if somebody li listens to that, they'll be like, Well, they, they're really looking out for me, you know, and don't realize that there's a yeah. knife going yeah. into your soul. I've heard so oh. many times, stop working so hard. Oh, I hate that one. I did a whole, I did a whole talk on that on, on one of my shows on oh. just that line alone because it's so suppressive. It, yeah. it just it it. I don't even. I can, it's hard to even explain where it comes from. I think it's the fact that you're doing so much and being so successful and you're happy, yeah. and I'm watching cartoons. And right. you know, eating uh, che cheese its, and I'm not doing that. You need to chill out so you can come down here where I am happy, and I don't want you to go up there no more. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you know, and that part of it is always like, mm -hmm. but yeah. So let's just also, there are wonderful friends out there also. <laughs> <laughs> and when yes. You friends, when you find those really good friends, are the ones that you them. And Shower, yeah. Get back, you know, right. that exchange in and hold on to those friends. Yeah, yeah. Shower them in it. And you know, it doesn't really take a big group, you know, it's like it, it takes a, a good amount of like I don't know. Sometimes it could be the one person, you know, one real person that's just supporting you. You don't need to, you know, because Facebook and all these platforms kind of make you think that you need to have like a thousand followers, ten thousand, a million followers. You really don't need that. That's right. You know, it's just how you feel and the people that are closest to you and the work that you're putting out. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Or absolutely. Hey. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about just the overall creative process. Like when you look back at your work, for example, I mean, I look at my work like in albums and things that I, you know, I looked at and I'm, I'm very critical of myself and I'm like, I, I listen to a record or an album and I'm like, yeah, that was good, but I could have done this. I could have done that, you know, and then they, but, you know, there's also, I heard an artist not too long ago say, uh, comfort is the killer of creativity, right? So yeah. I've never been really comfortable. I never wanted to be comfortable with my stuff. I always wanted to bring, bring it to the next level. Mm. So when you look at your work, how, how do you look at it? So I don't do that. Okay. Uh, I, I, you know, I love what I do so much that, and, and I know, and I have gotten stuck on for a painting, for example, I might get a, I've gotten, I would put it, start a painting and then and I would paint it and I would sit there and I would I'll let time go by and I'll stare at it. I'll be like, I'll make some changes and I'll be like, hmm, okay. 
that's what you know. No, they, oh, I could I could do this, make more change, more adjustments, or add to it. Oh, I have this idea, and I'm changing it. And the next thing you know, a year has gone by. <laughs> and, you know, and this is a true story. Right, right, right. <laughs> and and I, I could have painted so many other paintings. I could have done so many creative. So my point is, like, I, I don't now. I don't want to miss out mm -hmm. on the 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 time that I could have been applying to to more art. Right. More. right. And this goes for anything: music videos, directing, um, uh, editing. You know, because mm -hmm. you can do that. You can get really sucked in when you're editing a music. Oh video. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what I, I've definitely learned, I, I I've definitely gone like put a, learn to stop, start change, stop. Mm -hmm. so, so I will put a lot of work into something and I'll and I'll, I'll get it to where it's really good. And I do sometimes go over it and over it, mm -hmm. but I but I but I make myself stop. Okay, time time to move on to the next project. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, you can it can it can just be. So if edit, in editing, for example, you know, most songs are three minutes. So so you, you can go over it and over it and over it and over it, and then you can stop. And it can be great. And then and then a, a week can go by. I mean, oh, I got a new idea. I can go back and I can edit it again. And then when you're editing, and then next thing you know, you're just spending so much time making this fine little tune, tweet. Yeah, right. When, you know what? It, it was great already. Right. Sure. You know? So. Yeah. So yeah, you, I I try not to let myself. I I love most of my work, and mm -hmm. I know that I can always do it better. I can always, mm -hmm. get and I do get ideas when they're done. I can finish something completely, right. and then time goes by. I'm like, ah, oh, what if I did that? Because yeah. but no 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 no, I, I'm gonna move on to the next project. Okay. Yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with the editing, it's funny you said that because I, I think I, I remember spending one three days on an eye line shot. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to get, I couldn't match the, the perfect eye line and it drove me nuts. But well, I, I handled that by just not watching anything I've ever done or listening to anything I've ever done. No, I'm just kidding. No, but, <laughs> um, you're, you're so right about that. And I think that it's also has a lot to do with um, the creative process never stops. True. It, it shouldn't. True. True. So of course you can add something to anything you create. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Cause it's, it's what, it's what we do, you know, but there is that change, start, you know, start, change, stop, where yeah. you really have to decide, okay, I'm going to move on to the, and I've done films and I, I see that and I, I, you know, you can, but you know, I heard Martin Scorsese say that about Goodfellas, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, he was in an interview saying, yeah, I would have changed a little bit of something. And I'm like thinking, you know, it's such a great film, you know, and, yeah. and, and Coppola talking about the Godfather, same kind of thing, you know, lighting, he was a little too dark. I was like, what? You know, but <laughs> yeah. this, uh, this is something that should happen. Uh, you know, you should want to, and you should also love what you do. Right. You know, hundred percent. You should love what you do, and when you're done with it, you're like happy. You're like, oh, okay, that's that's good. You know, um, and then be able to move on to that next thing. It's really important. I wanted to uh, show a couple of your images, if that's okay. Oh, sure, cool. So, and I want you to tell the story of. Uh, I'm gonna show the last one, and then you can tell the story. I love this, and I, these are my own pref, my own. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I, 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 have a story. I love this photo. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, this is one of my favorite photos. Really? Yeah. I, I love it. this photo. I looked at. I was looking at this for like 20 minutes, I think, wow. the other day. Um, just a gorgeous. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this? Yes. Okay. So that is um, that's Jimi Hendrix's apartment. First of all. What? Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I pulled that in. I'm a guitar player. Hollywood. Oh. Uh, and the owner of the house is a fashion designer named Sue Wong. Um, and she she that's the clothing that she's wearing. Um, and the model, her name is Dustin Quick. And so Dustin is actually a good friend of mine for, for almost 20 years, the model. And she introduced me to the fashion designer with, you know, potential of connecting us so I could be one of her photographers. And she, she designs these gorgeous, these gowns that are just incredible. And she actually had a party at this house and invited me. And, um, and, uh, and then, and this, I have, she, I did, I did become her photographer before this, but, uh, 
so Dustin and I were got to shoot in this in this space. Wow. Uh, just I mean, I, I saw that and I was like, this is I didn't, I didn't even know Jimi Hendrix. I mean, yeah. good lord. Yeah. Um, I love this shot as well. I, I love the shadows on her. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and where, where, what city is this? This is downtown LA. Oh, okay. And this rooftop is was my studio. Oh, sweet. So I had a I had a rooftop studio for about eight years, um, and it's east east of LA. So you have the skyline. It's just east of the downtown. So you, you have that skyline. Um, so right here, the sun is. Uh, this is in the late afternoon, mm. like evening. And um, we're looking to the west, and so the sun is is coming like kind of. It, it looks yeah. like this is winter time, and um, yeah, so captured everything like so perfect. Yeah, and she she's a Russian model, um, uh, actor. She's actually an actor, actor and a model. Mm. Um, and very so very cool for her PR, yeah. Now I'm gonna show this one, then I'm gonna show the the last one that I want to show. This is just for George and I because we're we're uh, we were Chips fans. Oh <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, so this was recent. Really? Yeah, uh, okay. I shot that in December. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. wow. Very recent. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. I always he's, he's so cool. I was a uh, always a fan of that of that show. Growing up, you know, he was like yep. the guy. <laughs> Yeah. So, yes. so Eric Estrada was actually doing some charity work for the Way to Happiness Foundation. Oh, okay. And, and I was shooting for that yeah. for that charity, and that's how I got to shoot him. That is so excellent. Yeah. All right. So now you have to tell me how this came about. Yeah. Oh. All right. Now this is the best story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So um, I've always been very spiritual in, in my whole life um, and searching. And I have studied many religions um, with searching for, you know, who we are, what we are. Um, and I used to be a Buddhist. Oh, oh okay. So I, I had an opportunity about 12, year, 12 or 13 years ago to go to the Dalai Lama's house in the Himalayas, in the mountains, which is northern in India. And shoot a documentary with him, and I was I was a cameraman. Yeah, wow. so I, I got hired by this this production company to go there and do that. We spent three months there, and it was snow and cold, and we lived in a Tibetan apartment complex with all these Tibetans, and everybody was they're all monks, monks and nuns everywhere, um, and. Uh, I got to work with the Dalai Lama, and and I ended up That's meeting him. I, yeah, yeah, and I oh. have gone back, back and forth. I've been there many times over about a seven year period. Wow! Uh, and I was recently, I was recently there again a couple of years ago. Um, and and I got, I, I I got to photograph him. I have I have hours and hours and hours of video. I'm I'm editing I'm editing a, a documentary right now on him. Oh, wow. shot, and I have hundreds of photographs of him. Um, and he's just a jolly old guy. He's kind of like a reminding me of my grandfather. I was gonna yeah. I was gonna ask you, how was the energy there yeah. with him? He is definitely a very big being. Yeah, that yeah. is for sure. Um he's he's full of love, he's kind, he's very intelligent. I think he speaks uh, he, he speaks like probably a little bit of ten languages. Um, wow. he, he taught Buddhism in English when I was there. So I got to study Buddhism from him. He, um, yeah, oh, man. I really sat, I sat feet in front of him on, on my butt in, in <laughs> Indian style for eight hours a day. <laughs> oh man. Incredible. That is incredible. That is so cool. Is that, when you when you have something like that, that kind of an experience, you know, you look at like what, how you pulled in such an amazing experience. Oh man! You know, and you have to kind of backtrack and be like, yeah. man, I better keep that flow going. But right now, you know, I I did publish a book of all those photographs. Mm -hmm. of them. You can buy it on my website. Oh, cool! All right, there we so go. In the store, so it, it's called yeah. Buddhas and Monks by Tim right. Sabatino. 
Awesome. Great, awesome. Man. I'm going to get that. George, you have a question? And I'm yeah, gonna... absolutely. So when you're, I'm just curious, when you're photographing all these people, they're, I'm, I'm, I would assume that some of them, when they look back at that photograph, they, you've brought something out in them that they didn't see. Right? Have you got? Have you had artists look, look at you and say, "Holy cow! I'm I'm looking at something that I, about myself that I haven't seen before." Yeah, often. Yeah, you know that's one of the things that I love about photography is is I get to work with all these people. It's these personalities and these interesting. Most of them are other artists who I work with. Um, and yeah, you know because now they're being photographed with my eye. And I direct, I give a lot of direction when I shoot mm. photography or videography or music videos or commercials or short. I've, do, I've done some short films. I've never, I've never directed a feature film, but yeah. So then they see themselves with my eye and, and it's, it's a great, it's a great collaboration between mm -hmm. director and actor or whoever they are, musician or whoever I'm working with is it's, it's a collaboration between the two. So, so you're working together and you're creating together. It's, it's never a, just me, you know, it, it has to be, um, there has to be a strong communication going on between the two. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then I, we have great images or whatever to, to, as a final product. Amazing. And, um, it's great. Yeah. People keep hiring me and, you know, I'm busy and, and I love it when celebrities call me up because it's just a, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. one, one thing I want to ask you, um, I, I heard that your first one was Olivia Newton-John. Is that correct? Yes. How, how did you get that one? <laughs> so that was word of mouth. We knew, we knew some of the same people. Um, she was my first big A-list celebrity. Wow. And she asked me to shoot this album cover. And then we did that shoot. And then after this shoot, she asked me to shoot her tour book because she was getting ready to go on tour. This is around, uh, this I think is 2006, 2005, mm. 2006. She was going on tour, so I shot her tour book. And she did, I shot two of her CD covers, album covers. Um, and then she would ask me, I shot her, her she had a party with, um, I forget his name, a guy who wrote a bunch of her songs, really famous mm. songwriter who also lives, she lived in Malibu at the time. He also lived in Malibu. So she asked me to shoot the party. I shot that, shot her family photos, shot her, I shot her daughter probably 10 times. Wow. And who is also a singer. And I'm not sure if she's still pursuing that now. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but, but yeah. So, so when Olivia asked me to shoot her, that boosted my confidence tenfold. Yeah. yeah. I, it was amazing. Um, I, it, it was just such a great experience and she's a wonderful lady and obviously incredible. I, I would be in her living room hanging out. I've been over there many times now and she would just be walking through the hallway singing. Oh man. Yeah. This Pratt maybe writing a new song and singing it. He had a piano in her living room. So we and I would just be like, wow, this is cool. This is That's so like uh, surreal. <laughs> So cool. after that, um, jobs just started coming in and coming yeah. in. And it had to do with my confidence, but also the you know, having having an A-list celebrity in the portfolio definitely added to other sure. celebrities wanting to shoot with me. So I mean now I think I shot like a hundred plus eight big celebrities. So yeah, yeah. I've seen your and if anybody uh not if anybody, please just go to the site. <laughs> go to yes. go.com. I'll leave that there for a minute. Um, check out the work because the photos are there. And they were I, I was it was hard to pick the ones, you know, I would have brought them all over, but um the ones I picked were just to me were you know, you know, it, it's it's an individual thing, right? It's people see these things and they're like, Whoa, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so I wanted to ask you because you you said Olivia Newton John kind of I want to talk about leverage, you know. I talk a lot about leverage and sometimes um, artists don't really see that they, their work that they did could actually be utilized as leverage to oh, get that next. A hundred percent. Yeah. They don't really see, they kind of like, okay, well, no, I did that already. And I'm like, no, I, I, that's great that you did it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. But 
yeah. you know, show it and you're going to get more work from it, you know. Oh, absolutely. And that, and that is definitely a tool that I have used my entire career, yeah. especially after getting celebrities. I am, I constantly outflow. I promote, I post on social media all the time. Yeah. Even, I mean, I shot Olivia, you know, 15, 16 years ago. Yeah. Everybody knows who Olivia and John is. So yeah. I, I still post those from time to time. Yeah. And plus I'll pull out, I'll go to the photo shoot and I'll pull out a photo that I've never posted before. Photos that nobody's ever seen before. And I'll, and I'll post those, you know, yeah. um, but I, I mean, that goes for, that goes for all my work. There's, you know, so the fashion and headshots and uh, just cool shots, pictures that I like, I'll pull them out and I, and I, sh I show it off. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I have a show off. Right. <laughs> because yeah. That is how people know what you do. Right. And they know who you are. And then they, you know, they might not like this photo, but they might like that photo. Correct. And then and then they'll call you up, hey, you know, I need some pictures for whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. show business. That's yeah. right. Show business. That's it. Right. Show your business. And that's how you get more business by showing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's always something that 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 always fascinated me is the uh, the leverage part. George and I, we talk a lot about that because we're you know, we're booking guests for our show and we're like every guest, you're like an amazing guest, and I'm like, okay. This is le so this is a, some leverage right here, you know. Let's Absolutely. use the leverage, Absolutely. you know. And we go on, and uh, so we I love that that conversation. Um, so what are you working on now? What what are you planning? What's what's okay? What's I have some future? really big things happening. Um, with all of these different areas that I've been working on for in in the entertainment industry for almost thirty years now, um, I am now starting a brand new production company with one of my best friends who is now my business partner, um, Kristen Henry King. Um, we, uh, it's a, it's a commercial production company making commercials and music videos and the commercials, uh, are the genres that we're focusing on is car commercials and lifestyle. Um, lifestyle leaves it, definitely leaves it open there's kind of a wide area yeah. there but cars is my background i've i've driven i've done stunt driving and and directed and acted in over 150 commercials right. most of those are car commercials 90 percent of those are car commercials wow um, and so i have the um the uh the, like the knowledge with the driving teams and, and cars and all that and how to shoot them and all that. Um, Kristen is her background is she is an, an actor and now a producer for commercials. She's currently the face of Pepsi. She's here in LA right now shooting another Pepsi commercial. Wow. Um, we, so we have, we're building our team. Um, we have another producer on board and we have our accountant set up. Um, and so we're just basically joining forces in the world of commercials, which we love because we love it's fast paced. Yeah. Right. You, can do, you can do, you know, a couple commercials in a week easily. I've shot five commercials in a day. Oh my so, God. <laughs> really? How is that possible? <laughs> oh my God. I did a, um, I did a, a Pontiac commercial um, as an actor yeah. and, and the, we did five different spots for five different Pontiac cars in one location, which was the dealership. Right. But that was really easy. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's to give you an example. That, that makes it easy. Yeah. Usually we do one a day, but, but it's not uncommon to do two or three commercials in a day. If you've got everything, if it's the same, pro same like brand right. and have everything planned out and put together, because if you think about it, a commercial, is usually 30 seconds, but there's, a, there's often 15 second commercials. That's right. You don't yeah. need to shoot right. for, for that. You know what I mean? You, right. you, you can literally do that. You, you have the storyboard, you have the shot list, you have all everything all planned out. You got your team going. So yeah. everybody knows what they're doing. You know, you can easily shoot a 15 second commercial in a, in a couple hours and you can even easily shoot a 30 second commercial in a day. Yeah. You know, uh, just briefly, cause uh, we're, um, coming almost at an hour, but I wanted to talk a little bit about bringing stuff to the table because 
I'm looking at you as someone who brings so much to the table because the photography, the lighting, the videography, the driving, the the directing, the communication skills, all that that you bring to the table. Can you talk a little bit about how important it is to kind of get those skills because you never know when those things are going to come to play, you know, and, and the constant learning is really what makes that an opportunity that you're, that you're taking right now. Yes. And the personal development. And the personal development. Oh, yeah. Very good point. Okay. So I agree with that hundred percent. I, I am constantly, constantly learning. I read every day. Mm -hmm. I, I read at least 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm constantly doing life improvement courses, self-improvement mm -hmm. on communication or business or, or whatever area I want to work on at that time. Um, uh, you can learn forever. Right. Yes. People, people, that's another false datum that people are told is that after college, that's it. Right. Yeah. No more school, man. Yeah. Right? I don't know how to balance a checkbook, but still. Yeah. <laughs> look how look how much everything has changed. People are constant life is constantly changing. Yeah. Technology is constantly changing. You gotta stay on top of that. Yeah. And and then and we are constantly changing. And people are and there's you know, we um and oh yeah, so for for your yeah, for whatever your your craft is, your specialty whatever area it is, even that area, I'm always, I'm watching videos, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to know everything, even if I'm not going to do it all. Right. I want to know, I want to under, understand it and know what the possibilities are. I want to know what's out there. Yeah. And, and so that way, you know, um, if something comes up, I can handle it. Right. Um, and if you're confronted with something where it's unexpected, you're not taking, you know, it's just not, you know, blindsided by it because you're like, okay, yeah, I, I've, I've seen that. I've known that. I've read about that. I saw a video on that. I read a book about that, yep. you know, whatever it is. Um, I find that really one of the most important things. And I read also every single day as well and uh, self-improvement courses and, and all that. Awesome. Um, it's really the only way to keep your mind sharp for whatever else is coming because if you don't have that mind sharp, what comes in, you may miss it. Yeah. That's the right. mind's not sharp, you know? Yeah. Right. So do you have any words to your artists out there that are on this journey and they're kind of like pushing through and so far they've yeah. got 53 minutes of, uh, of this conversation. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much for having me here. You know, right. I, pleasure. I love to help people. I love to help art, other artists. So, so anybody out there can reach out to me. You know, my contact is on my website, my phone number is on my website, my email. I'm super easy to find to reach. You can you can reach out to me and contact me, and I'd I love to help. Um, for the, all the artists that you know, keep going. Don't give up. Don't stop. Um, keep yourself clean. Um, you know, like you know, you know, no drugs. You know, just even even meds. You know, I don't do I don't do I don't even do aspirin. Um, you know, keep yourself, keep your ethics in. You know, like be be ethical, be moral. And, and keep that around you too. So you need to keep the ethics in of the people in your life too. So you see somebody close to you and they're like, yeah, you know, doing stuff. Right. They're not, that's not okay. It's believe it or not, you are responsible to say something. Mm -hmm. You, you got to be like, Hey, you're in my life. I see this. I don't like it. It's not making me feel good. You know, let's, how can I help you? Right. You know, mm -hmm. well, how can we work on this? You know, let, let's do this together. Um, Love it. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't let other negative people. Remember to cut off those negative bad people. If if you can't work with them and get them to support you, and if they're invalidating you, making you feel bad, and you know, end it. Yeah. You'll make new friends. There's, there's more friends. There's lots of friends out there. Yeah, they're That's out true. there too. They're they're probably not coming in because you have that around you. Exactly. To get rid of that. That's right. That's right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, you know, we, we say this is spotlight conversations about film, music, health, and life. And I think we covered every single one of those subjects. <laughs> yes. So, awesome. so the perfect guest, <laughs> uh, Tim, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, please come back again when you got, when you set up your studio and you know, when you're yes. in Atlanta, we'd love to have you back again and let us know how that process was. Absolutely. 
All right. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Wow. What an amazing conversation. What an amazing person, huh? Yeah, man. You, you know, that's the thing I was saying before. You know, you got to be like water. You know, you got to be able to move around things and, and get opportunities and see the opportunities and try new things. And yes. if, it, yes. if it goes well, cool. If it doesn't go well, keep going. You know, and that's, that's really the, the message yeah, that we're always. Absolutely. Uh, and fantastic insights for the young artists out there, for any artist, just in general, correct. you know, just to keep correct. going. But it was fantastic. It was great. Love it. Love it. All right, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you all again next week on uh, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have Lee Haney eight-time Olympia champion uh, bodybuilder. You know, I was only six times. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he's going to be on the show next uh, next Tuesday night, so join us for that. T take care, everybody. George, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And as always, peace.